What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at markup for Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at markup. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Monday morning here in Vegas, and we are going to look at markup with Kivi. So up until now, we've been changing things sort of the regular way with Kivi. If we wanted to change the font color or size, we did the regular Kivi way to do that. And a lot of times changing colors is a little difficult. You have to use RGBA values, which is kind of a hassle. And, you know, we've just been doing things the normal way. But there's another way and probably maybe an easier way using markup. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. And markup is very, very similar to HTML. So if you know HTML, hypertext markup language, the language that all websites use, then markup is going to be very familiar to you. It's going to be very, very easy to pick up. So with markup, we can use markup tags to change certain things like text size and color and uh, position and things like that. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I've got two files, markup.py and markup.kv. It's our basic KV starter code that we've always got. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And you can find the code to this video and all the videos in the comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with almost 40 other Kivi videos. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So, okay, let's head over to our Kivi file here. And I've got a regular box layout. We've got it set to vertical like we always do. I've got the size set to root.width and root.height so it expands out towards uh, the entire size of the app. Now, let's just create a couple of labels here. So I'm going to go font underscore size. We'll just start out with, you know, 32 to make this bigger. And let's set the text equal to this is bold text, All right? So if we save this and run it, actually, let's make a couple of these. And, you know, for good measure, let's put a button down here too. We'll play around with buttons a bit here. And same thing here. Let me just copy this down. And for here, I'm going to say, uh, click me. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure this is looking okay. So let's go Python markup dot pi. And when we do, we see this is bold text, this is bold text and click me button doesn't do anything. But uh, okay, looking good so far. So just a basic app. Now let's say we want to change some of this text around. Let's say we want to make this actual bold. How would we do that with markup? Well, it's incredibly simple. First, we have to tell Kivi that we want to use markup. So we just type markup, and then set this equal to true, right? So now we can use markup anywhere in here that we want. So let's make this word bold, bold. So to do that, we use square brackets, and markup has opening and closing tags, just like HTML. So here, we would just use the bold tag, the bold markup tag, which is just B. So we've got this opening tag right here. Now we need to close it. So we put backslash B. And that's it. That's how you use markup. And it's just that easy. So if we save this, head over here, let's run this to see how this looks. We see this is bold text and it's very, very bold, right? Very cool. So just that easy. Now there are a bunch of markup tags and we're going to go through most of them in this video. In this one, let's change this to italics just for fun. And I bet you can't guess in a million years what the tag for italics is. So it's just, of course, I. And then we need to close our tag. So slash I. So if we save this, run it. We see, uh oh, it hasn't change to italics. What's going on? Well, if we look at our code, we forgot to set and bring it back up to markup to true in this label. So we set markup to true here, save this, go ahead and now run it. And of course, this will work. And we see italics is now in italics and bold is in bold. So very cool and very easy. Now in the past, whenever we wanted to change the color, we would have to use, you know, color equals and then you know, this horrible RGBA value, and then a transparency value. And you know, who knows what all of these things are, and it's a hassle and you have to do some math, you can actually just use the color markup tag and do anything you want. So here, it's just like HTML, you can nest these, you don't have to just use one tag. So if we wanted to also change the color here, we could just nest this outside of here or inside of here, however we wanted to. So this is the color tag. And this is the color tag. And here we would just set this equal to any HTML hex color code that we want to use. 
So we've looked at HTML color codes in the past. So we could just Google color codes, HTML color codes, and you're gonna find a thousand websites with color wheels that you can use to pick different colors here. And we can see if we want uh, blue or some sort of red. And we come down here. And then here is the hex color code right here. So we would just copy this, right click and copy, bring it back over here, and then just paste it in here. Make sure you put your hashtag in front of it, your number sign, and that's all there is to that. Go ahead and save this and run it. And we see now our bold text has that sort of red color that we picked, and it's really, really cool. We can change the size with this. So maybe we want to come down here and change the size of this one. So we could go size equals, and I don't know, let's make it really big, 150. Close our size tag. Save this and run it. <laughs> you can see italics is gigantic now. This is pretty cool. I misspelled click. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's fix that. And also set markup to true on this button. And inside of here, let's go uh, U for underline. Save this and run it. We see the click is now underlined. So we've got bold, we've got italics, we've got underlined, we've got color, we've got size. What else can we do? We can do a strike through. We wanna like strike out a word, so click me. We could just put S for strike. Close our S tag, save this and run it. You can see me now has a line through it, right? So strike, that's cool. We could change the font. So if we come up here, uh, let's change the font of text. So let's go font equals, and I'm just gonna go times. These are fonts that are on your computer, the TTF, or TFF, whatever the font file extension is. If you're on a Windows computer, it's usually in your C slash Windows slash fonts directory. That's the list of the fonts that you can use. So Times is a basic font, like Times New Roman, that sort of thing. So if we save this and run it, we can see, see now text, the font looks a little different for text. This is Arial, which is very straight. You see, look at this T and this T, this one has little wingy things on the top of it, right? So slightly different. That's times font, right? So that's cool. We could push text up and pull text down. So if we wanted to raise the level of the text, we could do that. So let's let's do that one. So uh, let's just create another word up and down. And for up, we wanna use sup, right? S up, and then we close this. And for down, let's do sub. So sub is down, sup is up, right? There we go. All right, so let's save this and run it. And we see now up is kind of pushed up and it looks a little smaller. Down is pushed sub down a little bit and it's the text is now smaller. So sup and sub, those are kind of fun ones. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So these are the main ones that you're gonna use. The most useful ones are usually probably bold and maybe italics and definitely the size and the color. So this is a very easy way to change the size and color of your text without having to, especially with the color, without having to convert RGB values into different colors. You could just use your HTML color codes, which are very easy to find just with any color picker. Just go to Google like we just did, and it's really cool. So that's all for this video. If you like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Doing over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.